Today we're in Mexico City and we're here to eat. This Mexico City series is all about sharing with you some of the city's best food. Mexico City is home to over 300 markets, which means thousands of opportunities to eat incredibly well. This is our fourth video from Mexico City, and we're taking you into the heart of the city's most exhilarating market. Watch out for one of the city's most unique tacos, a daunting street stall covered in bugs, and loads more. In this gigantic Mexico series, we're hunting down the country's tastiest food, from iconic street snacks to regional specialties. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. <laughs> this video is going to be set at La Merced. La Merced is one of the biggest and oldest markets here in Mexico City. It's bewildering, it's confronting, it's an exhilarating place to explore. There's over 5,000 stalls here, and it is the heart, the beating heart of the food scene here in Mexico City. Every single possible ingredient that's used in Mexican, Mexican cuisine you can find at La Merced. Now we've got a bit of a hit list, some stalls that we want to visit, things that we want to eat. We're definitely going to get lost, but let's get uh, into the market and start eating. Gracias. We found our first street food, and that is tacos de cabeza, so cow's head tacos. Let's go and grab some. <laughs> I've ordered two head tacos. So I went for cachete, which is cheek, so the cheek meat of the cow. So this one here, and then certida, which is a mix. So all bits from the head. I can see some cartilage, there's some uh, lean meat, there's some fatty bits, there's probably some brain in there. So at this stall you've got this huge cow's head. It's been steamed and it's just kept under like a plastic tarp. Um, and you can opt for any cut of the cow's head that you like. So they do brains, they do tongue, you can opt for um, a mix like I did. But it's time to get into all of these salsas. So we've got a uh, salsa verde, which is a green very salsa. Hot. Uh, very hot. <laughs> the guy's telling me that it's very hot. And these are some pickled onions with maybe, I think, habanero chili. Some cilantro, some cebolla, which is onion. And then there's a salsa roja. And then, of course, lime. So I'm just going to grab some lime. Ooh. Gracias, senor. And I'm just going to load up my um, tacos with some of the pickled onions. Pop that on the cheek taco. Got to add some cilantro. And then I really love salsa verde. So this is the green salsa that's got um, tomatillos and then chili and cilantro as well. So a few drops of that. Okay, so all I've done is popped it on the cheek taco. So we'll start with that one. So we've got a double tortilla, so two tortillas uh, to make sure that the meat sort of just doesn't soak through and the taco doesn't collapse. This cachete or the cheek meat looks really, really moist and tender. Wow, that is really, really good. The meat just falls apart in your mouth and it's beautiful. Woo! Amigo, muy, pic muy picante. <laughs> the guy told me it was really hot and it is. The pickled onions with the habanero chili have a really sharp burst of heat, but it works. It's all very, very delicious. I'm gonna go for another bite. Those onions, they're very hot, but they make it. They cut through the richness of the meat and they add a really great tanginess, a bit of vinegary, um, vinegary flavor too. Oh, that's good. 
I'm loving the look of this third tira. So the one with the mix of uh, head, really. So as I can see some fat, there's meat obviously, there's some cartilage. I think it's going to be a great texture. So what I'm going to do is add some cilantro, um, some of the onion, the cebolla. I might hold off on the pickled onions this time, just go for the fresh onions. And then the salsa roja, which is made with chilies. Keep it simple. Okay, and then I've got some more lime too, so squeeze that over. All right. Oh gosh, I've got the paper there too. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. That is a winner. All of the different textures, you've got the beautiful sort of steamed uh, leaner meat and then the fat which dissolves in your mouth. You've got some crunchy bits from the cartilage. Oh, that's really good. This market is such a maze of incredible stuff. It's such a neat place to explore. So we've been here before and we're still getting lost at every turn trying to find stuff. But we have found a bit of a, a food aisle which has got at least two things that are on our hit list. So let's go get the first one. But our first stop and it's for pancita. Pancita is a Mexican soup that's made out of um, cow's stomach and in a broth filled with chilies. Chica pancita and un café de ola, por favor. Gracias. We've ordered a small bowl of the pancita. This alley is actually called or nicknamed Pancita Alley because nearly every uh, food stall sells pancita. The pancita up front is in this ginormous uh, terracotta pot. It's really impressive. This is a brilliant atmosphere, it's really busy here so there is a lot going on and as you can probably tell there is a lot of noise around us so it's really really buzzy. We have our bowl of soup though so this is the pancita and I've just been watching him serve this up and the amount of chili oil in the huge clay pot that he's serving it from is unreal. There's so much on there and then look at all that stomach in there so a whole lot of beef stomach and quite a thin soup but really dark in colour so I think that's going to be packed with flavour. They're making tortilla to order at the front there. We've got a beautiful big tortilla to go with it and then a whole lot of condiments on the table so the red, a couple of different red salsas, we've got some onions and some lime, always lime here in Mexico so I'm going to squirt some lime straight in the soup just to give it a bit of a, a bit of a tang and let's have just some of the soup by itself first. Oh, oh. Hang on, we've got some, some musicians here. We sound great. That soup is so good. Gracias. The soup is really good. It's not nearly as spicy as I expected. I was a little bit distracted there to be honest. Let's just we'll grab some more. We'll um we'll get some tripe in there this time. Whoa. Oh wow. Oh, I can hear myself think. <laughs> That was great, but took away my attention. Wow, that is good. The, the um, stomach of the tripe is very, very soft. So tripe can be very chewy if it's cooked badly. That's not at all. So soft. And the soup, it's, um, oh, it is spicy. It's got a bit of a sour taste. Let's get some of this tortilla. It's a lovely big tortilla made to order. Rip of it off. I just want to bathe that in the soup. Oh, look at that. There's some, looks like some intestines in there as well. So some little bits of intestine. Let's get that on the tortilla. Mmm. Mmm. Very, very good bowl of soup. Not as punchy as I was expecting. So looking at it in that pot, I thought that is going to be absolute fire. It's going to be super deep in flavor, but actually the flavors are really nice and subtle. It's got some herb flavors coming through, a beautiful um, meaty broth, but not too heavy, not too rich. The stomach is just 
Perfect. And the spice level is so good and goes so well with the lime that I've squirted in there. Balances it out really nicely. They've got a herb on the table, so it's called papalo, and it's there to cleanse your palate when you finish that soup. So let's grab a few leaves. It looks a bit like um, watercress, actually, and looks so just a nice little small leaf. Whoa! Mm. Whoa! That was unexpected. I thought it was going to be a light, um, sort of subtle flavour. Massive burst of flavour. Quite spicy, um, quite tangy. Mmm, that'd be really good. Just say like having a mint, like having a peppermint really bursts in your mouth and just cleans everything up. That was good. Adios. We have emerged from the madness that is Pancita Alley into this area which is uh, selling uh, clothing and it feels almost peaceful. It is crazy in there. There's tons of live music, people are bustling about, the vendors are yelling for you to come in to their restaurants. It's a really cool atmosphere. I think what's really important to remember if you come to La Merced um, is that it's a working market. So people are going about their business. You need to keep moving. It's not really a place to sort of wander and amble about and slowly take it in. Uh, you just have to stay out of the way. All right, time for more food. We're going to head back that way for some more tacos. All right, we've found the famous stall. It's called Tacos McPeel, and this guy is famous for putting French fries in his tacos. Por favor, un bistec y un longaniza, por gracias. Sí, gracias. This is definitely a really interesting stand and you might notice some of the branding which uh, let's say has been probably borrowed from a very large international restaurant chain. So that seems to sort of sing back to why there's uh, chips or french fries in these tacos. And this is something we have never seen before, super unique and we're wondering if this is going to be a bit gimmicky or if it's really going to work. which is a spicy sausage and a bistec taco so um, really thinly sliced, sliced steak and there is a huge handful of french fries on top of there some nopales which are cactus petals I've added some salsa on top it looks pretty spicy I can see all of those chili seeds and then we've got a little uh, cebollita or an onion there and some limes now this uh, taco stand is awesome, it's all about the spectacle, all of the food is cooking right in front of you, it smells heavenly and he's making the fries to order so he's uh, sticking uh, the potatoes into this um, potato press and then they're coming out as french fries and he's deep frying them at his stand. It's a pretty cool concept. Okay, let's just grab some of this lime, stick it all over the taco. Now you can see that the, the longanita, the spicy sausage, is really crispy. Um, he's got his pan going, it's very, very hot. And all of the meat is just sort of caramelizing on that pan. Okay, this thing is a behemoth. I have no idea how I'm going to get it into my mouth. All right, oh, look at that. It's just telling me to add more salsa, but that's quite perfect for me. It's got a bit of heat. Mm, this thing is amazing. He is a genius for adding french fries to a taco. They're really crispy and creamy on the inside. I really didn't get much of a bite because it was so massive, but what I did eat of the longanita, so the sausage, oh, it's a little bit fatty. It's very spicy. Let's just try some of this uh, nopales. So that's the cactus petal. It's been cooked um, right down. But it's sort of still got some sort of smoky charred bits. Mm. Mm. It's got great crunch. The texture's a little bit slimy. Um, it's a little bit like capsicum to me. But it has its own unique flavour. Almost um really it's very good oh my gosh 
I can't get enough of these french fries. I think it's so hilarious that he's borrowed the branding of McDonald's. He's even got a Ronald McDonald um, picture up there <laughs> holding some tacos. <laughs> it's brilliant. turned into a really lovely day so we've stepped outside of the main building of La Masid and we're just wandering around the little um, outside market. So there are tianguis which are outside markets surrounding the whole of La Masid and up ahead I've just spotted one of our favourite drinks, it's called Tepache and it is a fermented pineapple skin drink that's flavoured with cinnamon and also a type of cane sugar called piloncillo. So um, please go and grab one of those. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Wow. Delicioso. Alright, so I've got this ice cold tepache. Ah, it's so refreshing. So tepache is made out of um, pineapple skin. It's fermented and then it's uh, flavoured with a bit of brown sugar or a cane sugar and then some cinnamon. It's sort of got a, uh, almost a smoky taste from that sugar and it's a little bit tingly because it's fermented. Mm. It's so refreshing because it's really hot now. Oh, such a good drink. We've been wandering around La Merced trying to find the sweet section and we knew when we'd hit it because there are thousands of wasps swarming these sweet shops. There's tons of candied uh, figs and jellies and they're just making a beeline for those candies. Let's go get some sweets. So we've got some um, lime which is stuffed full with coconuts. There are so many wasps here. Do not come here if you're allergic. Um, and there's all sorts of um, other sweets. So some nuts and some sesame and some um, sort of pumpkin seed sort of hard candies. I think we'll grab some of those as well. Uh, maybe, ah, this one. <laughs> Gracias. Tarugo. 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 Mm. <laughs> This is crazy. They don't come up and sting you. They're just attracted to all of the sweets. So we've got four of the limes with the coconut and then we've also got a slab of this uh, peanut candy. Let's go and eat them. <laughs> That was totally madness in there. Everyone who wasn't one of the sellers was sort of looking a bit stressed and trying to get them out of their faces. I think they were bees actually, not wasps. And there was a ton of them, but all the sellers, they were just, ah, what do you mean? It's every day, it's normal. It was pretty cool to see. So we got these limes stuffed with coconut. So limes, so prevalent in Mexico. You see them everywhere, you get them with every meal. So it's neat to have them in a different form. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yum. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's good. I'm getting the bitterness from the from the skin of the lime. It's just completely dug out. It's only the skin of the lime. It's been candied, so while it's bitter because it's um, citrus skin. It's still really nice and sweet. The coconut's been soaked in, um, in uh, sugar syrup and so it's all clumped together. Very strong in coconut flavor though too. I like that this isn't too sweet. Oh. Mm. Delicious. Mm. I was worried that it was going to be dry. It's not dry at all. Really juicy. Full of a nice sugar syrup but not too sweet perfectly put together. It's been a really good day hunting down the food here at La Masseur. So it's really easy to get into the heart of the market. We've walked all over the market, all through the meat section, which is incredible. Guys carrying half carcasses on their backs, um, people stripping down um, whole carcasses. There's so many sections here. It's a brilliant place to walk around and a brilliant place to eat.